Hello everyone, now we will discuss on the topic instrumental techniques for environmental analysis part 1. We have already discussed that different types of pollutants enter into the environment in water, in air, in soil and they create different types of health impacts if they are present above certain limit in the water or in the environment. Now, in this class we will discuss how to analyze the concentrations of different pollutants in the environment. As you know that for the analysis of any chemical component there are many methods available including qualitative and quantitative analysis. So, qualitative analysis gives us some idea about the presence of particular elements or pollutants and quantitative analysis gives us the quantifications of the pollutants or elements present in the system or in the environment or in any solution whatever may be the case. And we also know that with the advancement of the technology new and sophisticated instruments have been developed which can analyze the concentration of the pollutants in environment in water or air or in a gas sample with more accuracy and even very trace amount or very small amount or small concentration is also possible to be detected by the instrument. So, in this class we will discuss about the environmental analysis that is instrumental analysis, electrochemical analysis, chromatographic analysis and spectroscopic analysis and other methods. Now, as I have discussed that environmental analysis encompasses matrices from the hydrosphere, atmosphere, lithosphere and biosphere and target analyzed include naturally occurring chemicals and anthropogenically derived contaminants and different methods used for chemical analysis are qualitative analysis, quantitative analysis and the advancement is your instrumental analysis. By instrumental analysis we can perform both qualitative as well as quantitative analysis. We have mentioned that qualitative is to identify or detect the elements or compounds present in the sample and quantitative analysis determination of quantities of components or elements contained in a sample. And in our laboratory normally we do uh, volumetric titration or volumetric method to know the concentration of the any elements in a solution. And then we also do gravimetric method that is performed by using weighing of a material. So, these are normally used in the lab apart from this instrumental analysis that use of instrument for the detections and quantifications that is the uh, another attractive area and nowadays particularly when the concentration are very very small we are talking about like say arsenic fluoride in the water or nitrate or nox socks in the air. So, those concentrations are very less. So, detection of those by using instrumental analysis is very very appropriate. Now, the instrumental analysis can provide fast sensitive and reliable analytical techniques which can be carried out with minimum environmental sample handling. High resolutions in some instrument provide additional structural information of the sample. So, another advantage for using instrument it is that the sample volume required is lesser with respect to lab tested without instrument or chemical tested. Then these instrumental analysis methods 
may be based on the electrochemical analysis or chromatographic separation analysis or spectrometric analysis or some other techniques as well. So, in case of electrochemical analysis, this is based on the electrochemical properties of solutions. For example, say analysis of pH, oxidation reduction potential, conductivity, dissolved oxygen and titration. And chromatographic separation analysis, this is based on the separation of sample components according to chemical and or physical characteristics of the element in the sample and some example are GC and HPLC, gas chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography and ion chromatography. And spectrophotometric analysis, this is based on the interactions of matter with light like say UV and FTIR and fluorescence spectroscopy, atomic absorption spectroscopy and mass spectroscopy. Other methods which are also used for the analysis of environmental parameters, those are say TGA, BET analyzer, XRD, ACM, GCMS and LCMS. We will be making some discussion on these instrumental methods. The first is chromatography. So, gas chromatography and liquid chromatography both we will discuss and chromatography is a technique that separates components in a mixer by the difference in partitioning behavior between mobile and stationary phase. So, if we have one mobile phase and another stationary phase, the mobile phase may carry the pollutants or the element which is need to be separated from it and the stationary phase may help to capture that selectively or capture that preferably. So, when the mobile phase will pass through a column where the stationary phase is available, then depending upon the interaction or affinity of the elements with the stationary phase compounds or components, the retention time will vary and we will be exploiting this property. So, more the interactions the retention time will be more and less the interaction retention time will be less. So, if we have some known samples, so we will be able to know for known sample what is the retention time and in, a, in our case what is the retention time by comparing we can ensure that this type of compound or the element is present in our sample. And then it can be the mobile phase can be in gas phase or maybe in liquid. So, when it is a gas phase then it is called gas chromatography and this gas chromatography is one of the popular chromatography techniques to separate volatile compounds or substances and the mobile phase is a gas phase gas such as helium and the stationary phase is a high boiling liquid that is adsorbed on a solid. And because of its simplicity, high sensitivity and the ability to effectively separate mixtures, gas chromatography has become one of the most important tools in chemistry. And here we will see the working of this, the working of the GC so and its components. So, here different components are there, one sample injection unit, we need to inject the sample and like say here we need one column. So, this is our column, this is sample injection and one will be our carrier gas and then detector and sample injection unit that hits the liquid sample and vaporizes it column. This is our column and that is used to separate each compound or element and then detector. This is our detector which detects this and so this is our carrier gas which acts as a mobile phase and then we are putting the or injecting the sample here. It is going through this column and then it is going out and then at the detector it is detected and a signal is created and which is recorded in the computer. So, this is the functioning of the GC and components in the mixer are distributed between two phases, one of which is a stationary phase and the other is a mobile phase 
gas or carrier gas that carries the mixer through the stationary phase. So, this slide also explains the process once again. So, first the sample is introduced into a stream of inert gas or a carrier which is usually helium or argon for a liquid sample it needs to be evaporated before being injected into the carrier. And then sample components move through the packed column at a rate affected by the degree of interactions of each component with the stationary non volatile phase. And then substrates that interact more with the stationary phase are delayed and thus separated from substances that interact less. And when the compounds are eluted from the column they can be quantified and or collected through the detector for further analysis. So, these are the different steps and here also the same thing is, is shown here. So, uh, you see this is our mobile phase and sample is injected here and will be passing through and this is our stationary phase here and this is our carrier gas. So, there will be uh, interactions of this molecule you see here uh, some molecules are say different types of molecules are present here or elements are present here. So, those are having different affinity. So, after a certain time the location of these molecules or elements from the entry point are varying with time. So, which are having less interactions those are coming first those are having more interactions those are remaining here. So, gradually with time interval if we have number of pollutants present here in the sample. So, depending upon the affinity some will come first and then followed by the next ones which are having relatively more affinity towards this stationary phase. So, as so once this is coming here so then our detector will be able to detect it and one peak we will get. So, this one peak we will get ok. So, this is the methods for the analysis of elements using G C and here this is G C chromatogram this is a component 1 and component 2. So, this component peak we are getting first. So, at lesser time this is time and this is our response. So, if it is then this is with less time it is coming out that means, retention time is less. So, this compound has less interactions with the stationary phase. Now, if we use some standard samples here then if we can measure what are the time required to get the peak and we can match this time interval or if we can the residence time you can match then we can identify the possibility of the component present here with this with the known value. Okay. Similarly, if multiple components are present we can also identify the multiple components. So, this is qualitative analysis we can also do quantitative analysis by measuring the area of this peak. Now, what are the different parts of G C? We have seen that the it, it contains column, it contains detector and these are the two major component and in this column we see that G C columns may be of packed bed or capillary columns. It may be packed bed or capillary column. If it is a packed bed then relatively it is shorter and uh, it is thick columns made of glass or stainless steel tubes. Packed columns have been used since the early stages of gas chromatography, but with the advancement of the technology now these capillary tubes are being used. So, the currently the prevailing column type that is capillary columns produce sharp peak shapes and achieve excellent separation performance and are suited to high sensitive in analysis and optimized chromatographic separation begins with the column. Actually column is very very important for the uh, efficient separations of the pollutants or elements and as a result the performance of the instrument for analysis purpose. And how can we select the column? We can select the column we can consider different parameters of it or very properties like say stationary phase what is the stationary phase what is the column length what is the column id and what is the film thickness. So, now we will see so this is our packed bed column say if it is a packed bed so this is our tube outside is our tube and then inside is we are having say these are packing materials and in this case the internal diameter of the tube is 2 to 4 millimeter 
and length is 0 0.5 to 5 meter, support material with 0 0.5 to 25 percent liquid phase and liquid phase may be of multiple types. So, this is for packed bed column and for a capillary column you see this is our fused silica stainless steel that is the outside of it and then we are having one liquid layer and liquid layer and which are associated with this fused silica or silica and from this inner part the, uh, the carrier gas or mobile phase will flow and there will be interaction between the components and the liquid phase here. So, in this case we will see that internal diameter is very very smaller with respect to this. This is obvious because we need more interactions with the liquid. So, that is why this diameter this diameter is very less and length is 5 to 100 meter. You see where it was 0 0.5 to 5 meter, but here we are having 5 to 100 meter. So, more longer coil is, is made and then material fused silica glass and it, it gives good separations and the liquid may be of multiple types depending upon the, uh, the nature of the elements present in the system. Then next part important part of GC is your detectors. So, detectors the main job is to detect the element present in it and also to uh, quantify it. So, different types of detectors used in GC are flame ionization detector, then thermal conductivity detector that is TCD and electron capture detector ECD and photo ionization detector PID, flame photometric detector FPD and thermionic detector and a new variant of FPD that is flame photometric detector is called as the pulsed flame photometric detector PAPD and atomic emission detector AED, ozone or fluorine induced chem illuminations detectors. So, out of all those detectors except AED all produce an electrical signal that varies with the amount of analyte exiting the chromatographic column. So, they create some electrical signal and that is proportional to the concentration and the peak also we get and that area of the peak gives us the concentration of the element. Now, we will see how the chromatogram we get. So, this is an example of the chromatogram. So, here we see the x axis where it indicates the retention time and y axis is the detector response. Okay. Now, we see so up to certain time there is no peak, but and one baseline is there. This baseline in indicates that no pollutants is present then or any element is present. So, this indicates one element is present that means it is coming out. So, only carrier gas is coming the baseline. So, this is coming means this one is coming this peak is coming means one element is coming out from the column with the carrier gas that is another this peak another component is also present it is coming after certain time uh, residence time more than this further another one. So, likewise more the elements present we will get the more the peaks. So, measurements such as width at the baseline with a half height that means this is our baseline width and of a half height width we can measure and at the uh, peak height also we can measure this is our peak height maximum height. So, we can get from this and we can also get the area. So, this area is the concentrations of the particular element present in the sample. And this GC has some advantage. So, high separation efficiency and analysis speed for example, gasoline samples can obtain more than 200 chromatographic peaks in 2 hours. A general sample analysis can be completed in 20 minutes and small sample consumptions and high detection sensitivity. 1 ml of gas sample consumption 0 0.1 microliter of liquid sample consumption, a few mg of solid sample consumption. So, proper detectors can detect impurities in the tens to few parts per million that is ppm or even ppb level we can measure. And gas chromatography has good selectivity and can be used to analyze azeotropic mixtures and samples 
with closed boiling points, for example, some isotopes, cis trans isomers, adjacent or inter trans isomers, optical isomers, etcetera, and wide range of applications, although mainly used to analyze gases and volatile organic substances under certain conditions, it can also be used to analyze high boiling point substances and solid samples. And GC has some limitation also. What are those limitations? The it can only be used to analyze volatile substances. Some highly polar substances can be derived to increase their volatility for GC analysis, but the process can be complex and may introduce errors in the quantitative analysis and some issues are there. One of the major problems with gas chromatography is leakage. As the mobile phase is a gas that flows through the system, leakage may occur. Therefore, it is crucial to ensure that the parts and consumables are correctly installed and the system is regularly checked for leakage. Another problem is the activity for more polar analytes, especially the ones that trace levels, issues like irreversible adsorptions or reactant breakdown can also occur due to dirt build up in the system and silanol groups on the glass liners and columns. So, these are the some negative points and most problems are seen on the inlet area where the sample is injected. So, transferred and vaporized into the GC column, hence ensuring proper maintenance of the inlet and use of correct consumable is essential and suitability of GC for analysis of different compounds. It is say suitable for analyzing compounds with high volatility, thermal stability, low molecular weights. Okay. So, compounds that cannot be analyzed like say compounds that do not vaporize inorganic metals, ions, salts, etcetera, those cannot be analyzed. Highly reactive compounds and chemically unstable compounds. So, those are also not be able to analyze by this GC. So, hydrofluoric acid and other strong acids, ozone, NOx and other highly reactive compounds for example. And then compounds that are difficult to analyze like say highly adsorptive compounds and compounds for which standard samples are difficult to obtain because without standard we cannot determine this. Then another advanced instrument is GC MS gas chromatography mass spectroscopy. So, in this case from the outlet of the GC when we will be getting some uh, element which is coming out from the GC column. So, that will be coming into the mass spectrometer and this will be converted into ions. Then uh, the MS mass spectros spectrometer or spectroscopy will detect the compound as per their molecular weight or mass. So, the separated substances emerge from the GC column opening flow into the MS, the MS breaks each separated compound coming from the GC into ionized fragments and to do this a high energy beam of electrons is normally passed through the sample molecule to produce electrically charged particles or ions. Once the sample is fragmented, it is then detected usually by, a, by an electron multiplier which essentially turns the ionized mass fragment into an electrical signal that is then detected. And mass spectrometry identifies compounds by the mass of the analyte molecule. The library of known mass spectra covering several thousand compounds is stored on a computer and mass spectrometry is considered the only definitive analytical detector or we can say the mass detector. And this is an example as per this reference they have detected different types of phenolic compounds in water and you see the peaks at different intervals and analyzing with standard samples or from the uh, library 
the peak area is compared with the concentration and then the concentrations are measured like say phenol 8.15 DCP that is ND this is ND non detectable and then PCP 11.65 and BPA equal to 7.94. So, DCP, TCP, PCP and BP are mentioned here. So, that way GCMS is used and now we will start discussion on the liquid chromatography and high performance liquid chromatography that is HPLC. So, what is this? In case of HPLC, our mobile phase will be liquid not gas and so one will be stationary phase. So, one column will be there HPLC column will be there and then mobile phase will be in liquid and then the high performance liquid chromatography or commonly known as HPLC is an analytical technique used to separate identify or quantify each component in a mixer. So, what will be happening if we have say column we are packed with some material and from the top we are putting the liquid containing the element. So, depending upon the affinity the different elements will be captured here at different locations and after certain time interval it will be coming out. So, some element will come out first and then followed by other and followed by other depending upon the affinity. So, that way that is under gravity the liquid can fall, but in that case we may not get very fast, fast separation and we may not get the uh, more precision. So, in HPLC a column is used through which the carrier liquid or, or say mobile phase is passed at high pressure. So, a, to create the pressure a pump is used and uh, this pass through and when it passes through the high pressure. So, uh, the separations becomes more effective. So, the mixer is separated using the basic principles of a column chromatography and then identified and quantified by spectroscopy. The HPLC is thus basically a highly improved form of column liquid chromatography. Instead of a solvent being allowed to drip through a column under gravity, it is forced through under high pressure of up to 400 atmospheres. It is used for the separation of components of an organic mixture of compounds of type say non-volatile compounds and then thermally unstable and have relatively high molecular weights. And in the column the stronger the affinity the between the compound and the mobile phase the faster the component moves through the column along the mobile phase. On the other hand the stronger the affinity with the stationary phase the slower it moves through the column. And here say this is a solvent from this pump we are giving high pressure here and then injection the sample is injected here and it is going through the HVLC column depending upon the residence time elements will be coming out after different time intervals and then here the detector will be used to detect that. So, the signal will go to the PC and it will be it will be recorded there and the the carrier solvent will be wasted. So, this is the flow sheet of the HVLC or analysis. Now, the purification takes place in a separation column between a stationary and a mobile phase. The stationary phase is a granular material with very small porous particles in a separation column. The mobile phase on the other hand is a solvent or solvent mixture which is forced at high pressure through the separation column via a valve with a connected sample loop that is a small tube or a capillary made of stainless steel. The sample is injected into the mobile phase flow from the pump to the separation column using a syringe. So, here also the capillary column is used and subsequently the individual components of the sample migrate through the column at a different rates because they are retained to a varying degree by interactions with the stationary phase and after leaving the column the individual substances are detected by a suitable detector and passed on as a signal to the HPLC software on the computer and at the end of this operation or run a chromatogram in the HPLC software on the computer is obtained. So, this is the chromatogram just like your GC similar way. So, here also this is a baseline is there 
and that means no element is coming out only the carrier uh, liquid is coming or uh, the mobile phase is coming and then first time some uh, signal we are getting some peak we are getting and this is our TR that is the retention time from this to this okay. and this is our height in the similar way to that of GC process we can get the peak also. Now type of HPLC, HPLC may be operated in normal phase, it may be reverse phase in ion exchange or size exclusion. That means how the separation is taking place, what is the principle of separation that is most important. Say in normal phase column packing is polar that is a silica and the mobile phase is non-polar. It is used for water sensitive compounds, geometric isomers, cis trans isomers and chiral compounds. Reverse phase the column packing is non-polar, the mobile phase is water plus miscible solvent. It can be used for polar, non-polar, ionizable and ionic samples. So, apart from ion exchange can also take place. So, column packing contains ionic groups and the mobile phase is a buffer. It is used to separate anions and cations. Apart from that size exclusion is also possible. So, what is the size of the element and what is the pore size that way the bigger size elements are arrested. Okay. So, molecules diffuse into pores of a porous medium and are separated according to their relative size to the pore size. So, large molecules elute first and smaller molecules elute later. The HPLC has developed into a universally acceptable method, so that it finds its use in almost all areas of chemistry, biochemistry and pharmacy even in environmental area also. So, these are the different HPLC applications and it has some advantage like say a very fast process, a high efficiency, accuracy and versatile and extremely precise when it comes to identifying and quantifying chemical components and it has some disadvantage also, its cost despite its advantage HPLC can be costly requiring large quantities of expensive organics and complexity is also high pressure has to be created. HPLC does have low sensitivity for certain compounds and some cannot be detected as they are irreversibly adsorbed and volatile substances are better separated by gas chromatography. And this is an example of analysis of water samples containing different pH that is polyaromatic hydrocarbons. So, these are the different pH and they have these researchers have identified it and this is the method this is not important, but this HPLC analysis is there and by this analysis they have quantified like this. So, this is some example of the use of HPLC. So, these are the detection concentrations of different types of pH and this is the spikes concentration and these are the detection concentration there are some detection limit basically and these are the recovery and this is your relative standard deviation. So, these are some example of HPLC basically. Okay. So, up to this in this class thank you very much for your patience.